Hello, everyone. My name is Mara de los Reyes. Welcome to Hope for a Healed Child. I'm the founder of this page, and I'm also an author. I've written a book with the same title, Hope for a Healed Child. After my family received healing, miraculous healing for our son, I really just wanted to provide a place for other people who were believing for healing or maybe didn't even know about healing and could find a place where there were a lot of different testimonies. So I'm so excited. Every time I get to do an interview, it's such a blessing to me. And I know I've talked to enough people through messaging and emails and um, and in person to know that it is this is blessing people. So I'm super excited tonight just to have my guest, Priscilla Griffin. Welcome, Priscilla. Hi, thank you for having me today. Absolutely. So Priscilla, can you tell us, tell my audience a little bit about um, where you're from and then we're going to launch into kind of your background. I'm so excited. You've been, I'm just even learning more as we talk behind the scenes tonight. So I'm really excited for what's going to come out in this interview, all the ways that you were healed. Gotcha. Yeah. So um, I am originally from Houston, Texas, uh, pretty much lived and uh, born and raised there, obviously. And uh graduated high school, joined the military. I was in the army for a couple of years, um, got married to my husband who's still active duty now. And so uh, we're so close to retirement, we're almost there. And so uh, we're still, we're in Texas now. And so we'll just see where God takes us from there. That's awesome, come on, Texas. Um, so I usually just try to find out what is your, and I love that you're military because I feel like, oh, you, you've got a little bit of a fight and spirit in there. I think anybody goes into the military, they've got to have some kind of a fight and spirit on the inside in order to do that. But I want to find out, just tell me a little bit about how you came to know the Lord. Um, and we'll start there. What okay, yeah. So uh, like I said, I met my husband uh, while we were both in the military together, and uh, we got married in 2008. And shortly after that, um, I got pregnant, I, I believe it was in 2009, and that ended in an atopic pregnancy. And it was really strange, you know, the Lord really, and at this moment, I, have to, I just have to put this caveat, I was not a believer at the time, but there was always um, some nagging feeling in me that I was pregnant. And I, you know, went to the doctor and he's like, no, you're not pregnant. And everything came back negative. Every test they ran was negative. And I, and I kept going back and I was like, no, I'm pregnant. And they're like, no, you're not. And I think the final, the third visit, I get there and he's just like, look, we have a little bit of space in between our, our texts. I'm going to put you in the room. We're going to do an um, ultrasound and we'll go from there. Kind of to ease my curiosity and basically shut me up so I can stop coming to the appointments. <laughs> And sure enough, you know, the tech is looking and he's like, yeah, there's nothing there. And I'm, I was, I'm, I was young and I was like, is it anywhere else? And he's like, what do you mean? I was like, I don't know. I've watched on TV that there's, you know, babies could be somewhere else. And so he's, you know, with, he's doing his thing and he, he runs out of the room. He just, he puts the equipment down and he runs out of the room. And next thing I know, within two hours, I'm being rushed into the emergency room. I'm internally bleeding. My fallopian tube had brush ruptured. And that was the end of that. And um, I am very slow to react to things. And, uh, you know, that, and it happened so fast. I was like, how do you process that from I'm pregnant to I'm losing it and, and, and it all happened so fast. And so I didn't react for a long time. And my doctor would call me and check on me. And I was like, I'm fine. I'm okay. It, it, it happens. And so I was just, you know, moving on with my life. And with time, I couldn't go to the stores without hearing a baby cry. I mean, like I would jet out, I would run. It could be Walmart and I could be on the grocery section and it could be over on the, the you know, clothing department. If I heard a baby, that was it, game over. I, I couldn't be in the same vicinity. And so that happened. And I finally called my doctor in tears and he's like, this is what I was waiting for. He's like, I need you to come into my office right now. And so, you know, he prescribed antidepressants. It didn't help. Nothing helped. Uh, I mean, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't control it. I didn't, I didn't know how to process it. I didn't have no one to talk to, but I didn't want to talk to anybody either because I'm like, just leave me alone. I don't want any attention about it. And it was Easter service. Um, we were visiting in North Carolina. Um, my husband's family was there and we were visiting and yeah, the whole service had gone through and the altar call was done. And 
after the altar call. <laughs> and it's funny because I felt it. I mean, you feel the Holy Spirit enter you and you just, and I feel like I floated to the front. Like I, I, I remember it all happening in my head. I still remember to this day, but it was so weird how it happened. Um, and yeah, so I went and I got saved and believe it or not, within that second, the pain was gone. I was no longer an emotional wreck. I was no longer, I didn't need the antidepressants. I didn't need people to console me or to even try to avoid me. I, you know, I even worked in the nursery for the longest holding babies. I mean, it was okay. It, it, it helped. And so that was the beginning of sparking my interest. And um, from that's there, incredible. I, was, I just want to, that is amazing. And you're talking about that's a heart healing. That's healing from a wound, from a loss and from grieving. And it sounds like you received like a supernatural kind of a peace or a healing about it. This, and we didn't talk anything about this before we got on. So that is amazing. I really just hearing you and knowing a couple of the other things, it's like, wow, the Lord has really just shown himself to you in, in powerful ways. That's incredible. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you know, just going down the path is just, it, it, I've grown in Christ little by little. I've, you know, I've continued, I've actually had two other miscarriages. So we've had a total of three losses. And um, just to say, just real quick, because I feel like this is an amazing testimony on top of the rest of the testimony <laughs> is uh, later on in life, uh, about when we were about eight years married, um, God kept nagging me to quit my job. And I was like, well, we're a two-income family, God. We tithe. We give money to offerings. We help missionaries. Like, what do you mean? I was like, this doesn't make sense. And I would, I, I would haggle with God. And I would be like, but if I don't work, then that's less money I'm giving to you. And I, you know, I would justify it in my head. And I would have restless nights for months and months and months. I mean, pro actually probably like two years. And it just, it, it would come in waves. And I just couldn't. And I, I would cry myself to sleep. And I would tell my husband, like, something's just bothering me. I feel And so... The day came and I, I finally said, you know what, enough's enough. And I did. And, you know, for 10 years, you know, we lost three babies. That was my, my biggest desire was to have a baby. I just knew I was supposed to have one in my head. I had already seen it. It, it was like God was already revealing to me it was going to happen, but I just didn't know how it was going to happen. And so sure enough, I quit my job within maybe two or three months. I was pregnant. Wow. And I had my son. So 10 years into our marriage almost immediately after I obediently listened to him because I'm stubborn and hard-headed. <laughs> um, it happened. And then we were blessed with Xavier. And then, you know, I, it's funny because then I was like, I felt like there were still more and we prayed about it. Cause at this point we're 10 years in our marriage. My husband's in his forties. I'm in my mid thirties. And we're like, we're starting late here. We already have other kids. And so, you know, starting all over was like, Whoa, and sure enough, we got blessed with another little boy. So we have two little boys. We have a three-year-old and a one-year-old now. Oh, come on. That is so special. I just love that. And I love, you know, we talk a little bit here about the present leading of the Lord, or that's something God has shown me recently is just, he has a present leading, a place where he's bringing us in this moment. And that's what you're talking about is God was was leading you somewhere and sometimes we resist because we allow our logic brains is what i say to get in the way like this just doesn't make sense i but i've got this over here but when we really press into that present leading like wow he's leading us for a reason so that is amazing absolutely yeah. so tell me a little bit about i think the, um, the event page says back pain healed, but, um, tell me your story about how you hurt your back or what happened with your illness. So back pain. Uh, so I was in the military, like I said, um, it started early on in my career there and, um, it was always just a small discomfort, nothing too major, nothing I ever thought anything of. I mean, I, I carried on with my life, you know, and I was like, maybe this is, I'm getting older, but I was still maybe just turned 20. <laughs> I was like, I don't know how getting older works. Maybe this is how it starts hurting. Um, so it's just little by little. And then with time, it was like the cortisone shots and the steroid injections just to kind of, um, you know, muscle relaxers. And just with time, it just got worse and worse and worse. And um, gosh, I don't even remember how long it's been now. A couple years back, um, 
it got to the point where I just couldn't handle it anymore. I had the burning, shooting pain, and I would completely lose the ability to not, not lose the ability to walk, but the pain was so bad. I couldn't keep going and I would have to take a, a long sit down or I would even have to lay down. And so went to go see an orthopedic doctor and he was just like, oh yeah, you've got bulging ruptured discs, you've got sciatica, you've got arthritis, you have all of this stuff going on in your lower back. So we did back surgery and he operated on two, two discs. And immediately after the surgery, I felt great. I was just like, yes, this is awesome. This is working. This is awesome. Did they do like, did they just correct it or did you get like metal plates? What? No. Uh, so what it was, it was what they called a disectomy, laminectomy. So they just basically went in and carved out on the bone so that the nerve can sit without being pinched, which will cause the shooting, nasty burning pain. Got it. And so it was, it was a fix per se, um, lasted six months and the pain was back. And, um, this time I went to a neurosurgeon and, you know, she did a full MRI. We saw everything and she's like, you herniated two more discs, um, lower or higher. I can't remember. And, um, I was just like, okay. She's like, so you're going in for surgery again. We're going to do the same procedure, you know, and do that. So at this point I'm four, four vertebrae in, I think. And, um, they've done all this stuff to it. So, uh, think about it fast forward where I am now, all that carving is not good for your back. You know, they're basically chipping away at bone. Mm. And so I actually never recovered from that surgery. I never actually got to return back to work from that surgery because she just, she was like, well, something's got to give. She's like, we'll just extend your recovery. Maybe you just need a little bit more time to recover. And it never, I mean, it, the pain was just there. It was not going anywhere. It was getting worse. And so I just sucked it up for a couple of years, maybe a year or two. And I was just like, okay, this is, this is life now, I guess. Wow. And so, um, so the, what, the surgery, what the surgery intended to fix that pain just never left. No, it never left. Wow. And then prior to leaving work, I mean, I would fall on a daily basis at work. I had a cane. I had, you know, I had all kinds of, I had a walker. I had all kinds of things that you could think of. I wasn't allowed to use the stairs because my, my back would just give out and I would fall. I mean, I mean, all the accommodations were there for me and it's still, I mean, it's just nothing was working. And so I get here to Texas and I see the top notch doctor in the area and um, he does, he checks it and he's just like, yeah, he's like, we're going full metal rod this time. Like you need a rod put in all those vertebrae a little bit more on top, a little bit on the bottom. It's a two part procedure. We're going to go in from the front and this is gruesome. I'm sorry if people are not into that, but they're like, we're going to take everything out of the front, all your organs. We're going to drill it in from the front, put everything back a week later, you're, you're going to recover. And within a week or two from recovery, we're going to do this again, but from the backside and we're going to screw that in. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. this is a little intense. Okay. Now we went from like one day procedures to like, a, and then, you know, recovery is an entire year. Wow. And I struggled with that. Cause I'm like, I have babies. I have a newborn. I'm still breastfeeding. Like this is not going to work out how that I, I can't lift my baby. I can't, I was like, this isn't going to work. And so I sat on it for a long time. I'm like this, no. And so we started looking for nannies and I was like, we'll figure this out. And went to go see another doctor to get a second opinion. The second doctor was like, yes, he was right, but I'm not comfortable doing it. Fusing two vertebrae is pretty common. Anything more than that, and your success rate really diminishes because now two vertebrae you can still bend. But when you go to four, you're literally like you're not bending, you know? And so you've lost a lot of mobility at this point. He's like, but that's what you need. And he even confirmed it. He did his own tests, his own MRIs, his own everything. He's like, unfortunately, you're going to need more than what we thought. And he's like, I'm not really comfortable doing that. Wow. So that made me sit back and think that's such like bad news to get from the doctor. Like that's just like doom spoken over your life. Like this is so bad that I'm not even able to do it for you, but yeah, that's what you need. That's, oh my goodness. What Absolutely. were you thinking at that point? I was at a loss at that point. I'm just like, so this is my life for the rest of my life. Like this is, this is, I'm, I, and I would cry because prior to this, I used to marathon train. I used to be able to run 12 miles on the weekends. And I was a fitness instructor for a short while. And there were, and I love mountain climbing. There were so many things I used to be able to do in my early life. And now here I am in my thirties and I can't do anything. I can't even lift my child. My one-year-old, as soon as he started walking, he had to learn to come to me. Even when he crawled, he had to come to me 
when he needed something. I couldn't pick stuff up off the floor. There was, I mean, it was just, there were so many things we had to work around. I couldn't put dishes away. I couldn't bend over to the trash can. There was so much stuff that just, we had to accommodate for me. And that was life. That's what, that's the way I saw it from this point forward. Even when we purchased this home, these are huge doors and there's a walk-in shower and it's a one story. We went from a two-story house or three-story house in North Carolina to a one story because I'm like, I can't do stairs anymore. Wow. And so we prepared for that buying a home that was accessible with a wheelchair and whatever life was going to throw our way because that's what we were told. Yeah. And so we didn't, we haven't really touched back on this, but at this point, like in your walk with the Lord, you didn't really understand that he, when Jesus went to the cross, he died for everything and he died and took it all on himself so that we could walk free in this life. So you didn't know anything about any of that. I honestly did it. I mean, I had read my Bible. I had a church. I've done uh, Bible studies. I did all of that, but for some reason it was a topic that really just wasn't discussed in church very much. And so it was just, I had come to terms and I had even justified it. Well, Paul had a thorn in his side and God wouldn't take it away. So this is my thorn to keep me straight with my walk with Christ. This would keep me, cause I was clinging onto him for help, but I wasn't asking for healing, but I would, I mean, for everything, even when I would go into these procedures, I had seven spinal epidurals. I had, there was other smaller procedures in between the big surgeries. And I mean, I would lay on that table cause they wouldn't, you wouldn't be unconscious. You would be wide awake when that needle was being inserted. And I would just sit there and I would just pray and pray and pray. And I mean, I would cling to him in that sense, but I never asked for healing because I didn't know I wasn't aware of that healing. And so that's, that's just how I operated. And, and like I said, I justified it with Bible scripture, like, oh, well, he didn't do it for Paul. And, and, you know, there's other disciples that had medical problems and he didn't take that stuff away. And so that's how I would justify it with myself, um, but not knowing any better. That was the problem. Yeah, and many Christians don't know that and they aren't taught that, um, that healing was provided on the cross. And what what is um, promised to us, I guess I would say, is persecution. And and then there's a scripture, John 10, 10, where the thief is the one who comes to steal, kill and destroy. But Jesus Christ brings life to the abundant and anything contrary to life to the abundant is not from God. And that is so misconstrued. I mean, that's where I stood. I was taught to pray if it's your will like if you if it's your will will you heal my son and kind of standing in that mercy position and it's like once I learned no it is his will and and that's the purpose of this page so you are not alone and I hope that the right people just come and hear this testimony because more people need to know it's already been provided by Jesus absolutely Absolutely. Once I learned, it was just like, wait, what? (laughs) I've I've read the whole Bible, but it's like, and it's funny because a quick search on my Bible one day was just like healing. And then like scripture after scripture after scripture. And the biggest thing on every single one of those scriptures was if you believe Mm. you will be healed. And that was my problem. I knew about it. At this point, I had become aware of that he can heal, but it was like, but I've had this for 15 years. I've been praying to him. And I believe in him, but then I had the problem with, but I don't know if I believe he'll actually heal me because why hasn't he done it yet? And so then I started questioning and I allowed Satan in my mind and I allowed him to really just convince me that it, no, it's not possible. It's not real. You, I mean, you, you've exhausted everything. You've been praying along the way, but I didn't know how to pray the right thing. I didn't know what to ask for. I didn't know that that power was available to me. That's so good. And I just want to challenge the people watching today to put that in the chat. I do believe in healing because it's so important. It's important to speak it out, to write it, to constantly remind yourself, I do believe in healing. It's critical. It is a critical point, matching that faith with what God has already provided. So I'm excited to hear. So, so then what happened? You're, you're like basically kind of up against a wall of this horrible surgery where they want to take everything out of your front side and put them all (laughs) on your back at such a young age with little children. Oh my goodness. Well, and yes, that, that, that happened. And then as if it wasn't bad enough in 2018, I was hit by a semi truck, not, not literally, but I was hit with even worse news that I had multiple sclerosis. And so it was like, are you kidding me? Like, like as if, as if this is, you know, this uncurable thing already. And now I have another uncurable disease. Are you kidding me at this point? And so 
then they were like, well, all along, it could have been your back, but it could have been the MS overlapping. And that's where a lot of this pain is coming from. And that's probably why we thought we fixed you, but you were still in pain. And there was just a lot of what ifs and, and there was no answers to anything. And immediately with the multiple sclerosis, it was the same thing. Like you need to get on medicine immediately. You have 12, I think it was 12. You have 12 lesions as of right now, since they discovered it, they're all in your brain. And uh, you know, any lesion at any point can, I guess, reactivate or you can get new ones. And because they're in your brain, you know, your brain, you know, this side is food and this side is speech and this side is blinking or whatever it is, you know? And they're like, so if at any point it hits you in one of those spots, you forget how to do that. And it's irreversible to a certain extent. So if it affects your walking, you're not going to walk anymore. If it affects your swallowing, you're not going to swallow anymore. And that's how it was thrown on my lap. Yeah. And I think going back to, again, like, wow, the, um, the power in the mouth of a doctor is like amazing. And I just want to remind my parents, like whatever you're hearing over your children or even over yourselves, make sure that you cancel the curses that people have spoken over your bodies, because we need to go back and take the authority that no, it is not, that is not my story. So I love that that is not your story. It's not. And you know, it's funny because I, when I got diagnosed, obviously it was like, it was mind blowing. It was like, well, I didn't know what to do. I couldn't process it. And they're like medicine now do this now do that. I'm like, can I just process the fact that y'all just gave me like a death sentence here? <laughs> like, and I really had a hard time. And they're like, but you need to be on medicine now. And I'm like, I don't know how I feel about this. And at this point I had kind of already started looking into scripture about healing. And so I was just, I told my husband, I was like, I have a peace of mind about this. I really, I, I can't explain to a doctor, but I have a peace of mind about this. And I was like, and I don't want to take the medicine. And he was just like, baby, I support you. If you're saying this from God, I'm going to support you hundred percent. And I was just like, okay. Cause I know I sound crazy. Every time I go to the doctor appointment, they are just like, I get the spill of you realize you're going to die. You realize this and multiple sclerosis is going to do this and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, I can't explain to you. And I've gotten to a point where I look like the crazy lady and I always preface it like, okay, this is going to sound crazy to you, but God healed me and I'm okay. And I have come to terms with, I'm okay. So please stop forcing me to take medicine. It's not, it's not going to happen. And so, you know, naturally they get upset even to the point where they're like, well, if you're not going to eat on the medicine, just get off of my patient list. Like, wow. We're kicking you out. I love it. I love that. <laughs> let, let the doctors kick you out because you are. And again, it goes back to the present leading. Like you heard I don't need this. This is not where I'm being led to. I don't need this medicine. So it's back to that present leaning of the Lord again, where you felt comfortable to say, nope, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. And willing to look crazy. Come on. Sometimes <laughs> you have to, you have to look to the world. This doesn't make sense. But you, when you know Absolutely. in your heart and in your spirit, it is a different story. Yeah. Yeah. So then we get to, we get to how I got healed. Uh, so, um, for those of you that know about The Chosen, it's a TV series. There's two there's two seasons now that just wrapped up. They're getting ready to do their third season. But, you know, we watched the first season. I, I didn't initially hop on board, but I heard about it, you know. So we were catching up on season one. And then we got really excited for season two. We're like, oh, this, is, this stuff is good. This is good stuff. And so it was season two, episode one. Again, didn't even catch it on time because we have kids. So it's like when we get a quiet time, we'll, we'll do it. And it was so funny because I don't sit on the floor because I can't get up off the floor. And so my son was insistent, like, mom, please sit on the floor with me. And I was just trying to get him quiet so that we could watch the show. And so I sat on the floor with him and I was like, I'm gonna pay for this later. And so it's season two, episode one, Jesus is talking to one of the, it was just a random villager, I guess. And um, he was a sinner. He had, I'm trying to remember the story. I don't quite remember it, but he had stole something. I think in, in the process of stealing, he hurt his leg. I could totally be butchering this, but he's, he got hurt. And, um, and so, you know, that emotion, I, it was that moment when that emotion of the pain that he was in and how it was hurting him, it spoke to me. It's, and I was just like, Boo, I'm trying to be quiet so nobody can make fun of me because, you know, you don't want to cry, be the one that cries at movies. And so I'm just like little tears are coming because I felt that I was like, I want it so bad. I want, he, at this point I had already heard about healing. I have been studying healing. I've been praying for it. And it was like, I felt that emotion that he felt that he wanted to be healed. And it, it spoke to me so deeply. And that moment, I felt something in me. 
I can't explain to you what it was. It wasn't a jolt. It wasn't, it was just something like almost like something entered me, I guess. Like, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. It was just, just something happened. And I remember thinking in my head, like, that was weird. <laughs> and then as, as the show continues, again, no one knows I'm crying. So I'm like trying to, you know, tear, take it off. And I started doing one of these. I'm like shifting left and right. Cause that's painful and it's gone. And I'm like, okay, finish the show. Didn't say a word. And we go to get up and I got up without a problem. So I was like, okay. And so my husband's like, I'm going to get Xavier in the shower. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll pick up the toys when we get back. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and, and I was like, y'all go ahead. I'll, I'll go ahead and pick up the toys. Again, I can't pick stuff up off the ground. And so I grabbed for the first thing and I'm like, pick that up. And then I grabbed the next thing. And at this point I'm tearing up again. And I'm like, I picked up something else. And then I was excited to clean. Who gets excited to clean, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to clean. And I'm like, okay. And then I'm boohooing at this point and my daughter's in her room. And I just go in there and I was like, I think God just healed me and I'm kind of freaking out. And then I just shut the door <laughs> and she's looking at me like, okay. And then I just, I took a moment. I went into my son's room and I just let it all come out. I was just crying and I was thanking him. I got on my knees. I was praising him. I was like, you healed me. Like I can't, you healed me. <laughs> I don't know how to, you know? And so it was just a beautiful moment and it took me a while. So my husband's like trying to wonder where I'm at. I go in there and I'm all makeup messed up and everything. And he's like, what's wrong? And I was like, I think God just healed me, but I'm not sure. And I'm freaking out right now. <laughs> and that's kind of where I was at. I was just like in disbelief. Um, and I, and I stayed there and unfortunately, um, I've shared testimony videos too, actually. The first one was like, guys, I got healed. This is what happened. And I explained this whole situation. And then about a week or two uh, passed and I believed that I knew what happened but I was struggling with it. I really struggled with it because I 15 years of back pain. I mean, it doesn't, the, that memory of the pain doesn't just go away. Right. You know, it's there in our, our sinful nature of this world and in our carnal, I, I don't know. It's just something about it was just like, I'm not really sure. And so sure enough, I, I, um, I, I let, I let the enemy get to me and, you know, I, and I even try to justify it. Like, well, you know what, even if it was 30 minutes, I'll take it. God was great for 30 minutes. And he gave me a glimpse of what it's going to be like in heaven. And that's, I, I had already prepared my mind that this is what was going to happen. And I was okay with that in case he did decide, Oh, I'm just kidding. It's not really healing. <laughs> um, and I, can I just speak to that really quick. It's kind yeah. of, sometimes we position ourselves like, um, before I get hurt, I'm going to like, like, I think it's like in relationships, you can be the, you're going to guard your heart first so that you don't get hurt. Like, I'll, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm okay with this before this actually is what is going to happen. Absolutely. And it's like a, that coping me mechanism where we need to protect ourselves. And man, and that is such raw honesty. I, and tell us the rest of that. That's so good. What, yeah, what so I, I, you know, a week, about a week passed and you know, the pain slowly crept back and I was like, it's okay. It, it's okay. You know, and I shared my testimony video. Now I'm going to look really dumb, but it's okay. You know, I'm going to glorify him for those 30 minutes. It was more than 30 minutes, but I'm going to glorify him for that time. And a really sweet friend of mine, when, when it initially happened, I reached out to three friends that truly believe in healing. And I, again, I was new to this. So I was like really excited to share it with them. And again, fast forward a week passed and she sent me a message. She's a super busy mom. And so she just sent me a bunch of voice clips and she's like, Hey, I, I'm so sorry. I haven't followed up. I just want you to know I'm praying for you. And just please understand that this, the enemy is going to mess with you. He's going to tell you you're not healed. He's going to tell you it's not possible. He's going to tell you that God can't do it. And he's going to make you feel like it was just, a, it was, it was a whim and it's, and it's gone. And at this point I was in such distress and I, I heard those messages and I started crying and I'm like, that's exactly how I feel. And so it was so encouraging to hear from her. And I've told her, I was like, I don't think you realize the difference you made in my life because I really needed to hear that from someone who had been through, you know, her daughter had been healed. And so, you know, she knows, she walked me through the process basically. And so I got down on my knees and I was like, God, I'm so sorry. And I'm stubborn and hard headed. If you could just do it one more time, I would really appreciate it. And I was just raw and honest with him. And I told him, I was like, I'm sorry, I didn't believe. I'm sorry that I didn't take you serious. I'm sorry that, you know, I just confessed it all. And I, and, and I was just like, I understand now, please. And immediately the, gone, the, the pain was gone. It was gone. And I was like, I won't question you ever again. So I love that Priscilla. And I love it because it is, it's a repentant heart that is, it goes from believing that God is pretty 
okay to to fully leaning into the incredible goodness of God and your heart just repented. And it's like you turned away from going, okay, maybe this will last a little while to fully going, no, God, you are as good as the word is saying you are. That is so beautiful. And that is, that's amazing. I just want to encourage anybody watching today, just type in the chat, like, God, you are as good as you say you are, because it's so critical to partner with that with that belief and to lend our hearts to his full goodness all the time. So that's, a, that's my story. And you know, I, and I, I can't sit here and say that I don't struggle. I struggle with Satan trying. He tries every day. He tries. And I think we discussed this in the, uh, like you said, in the uh, background, um, he's not going to leave you alone. I mean, we're, we are believers and followers of Christ. And until the day we die and he calls us home, He's going to mess with us until the very bitter end. And so, you know, he tries and, and I've gotten to a point now where it's like, I'm like, no, you're not going to get to me. I'm healed. Okay. Let me remind you in case you forgot, I am healed. And, you know, and it's to the point that I even talked to myself, we were walking into Sam's one day and I had a little twinge and I'm like, oh, you're not doing this to me today. And my daughter's like, what? And I'm like, oh, I'm just talking to myself. Don't worry. No, I'm the crazy lady that talks to herself now. And I'm okay with that. And so, you know, and again, he's going to try, he's going to keep continuing and you just have to stand firm in, in what you believe in what, what happened and in scripture, I mean, scripture is, I mean, that's, that's our textbook of, of life. That's, that's our rule book, you know, and it's just understanding it and really, truly believing what God did for you. And so, you know, again, he, there's been, I had my foot has been swollen for the last two months. Why I didn't pray sooner about it. I don't know. But it was one of those things where I had already scheduled a foot it, it, in your mind. I'm already pre-programmed. Like there's something going on, go to the doctor, there's something going on, go to the doctor. And, you know, I made the appointment and then I was like, no, you know what? Wait a minute. In the name of Jesus, this is going to go away. I don't care what anybody, sure enough, the swelling's gone. The pain's gone. Come on. And I'm That's like, awesome. Priscilla, you know better. Why'd you wait two months? You know, it's one of those things where with time, you learn to get better and, and you don't allow Satan to get to you, but he's going to continue no matter what. And that's okay. I'm okay with that because that just tells me I'm on the right path. Yeah. And you know what I love about um, what you shared is that you immediately, like, even though you did it tentatively, you shared your story and you shared your testimony. You, you went on Facebook and shared it because that's what people need to hear and need to know. And so I love that you're just sharing your story. This is what the world needs to know is that God is so good. He's as good as the word says that he is. So I'm just so grateful that you shared your story this evening. And I love that you mentioned too, that you had a friend that just really encouraged and walked you through it. And I just, parents, I just really encourage you. You can either, you know, search out if you don't have anybody in your life, just pray that God will put that person in your life. And I hope that this is also a space where we can be reaching out to each other, but also to be that friend to be that friend when you've known the truth, to be turn around and be that friend to somebody who really needs to hear like, nope, the, the lies are gonna come and you're just gonna reject them and stand in your power and authority. So thank you so much, Priscilla. Could you pray for um, the people watching tonight and the people who will watch, um, mostly it's parents or uh, you know, people just hoping for healing for children. So, um, but I think any, any story of healing is so powerful. So if you would pray for the people watching, I'd really appreciate that. Oh, I'd be honored. Father, we just come to you today and just give you all the glory and all the honor for absolutely everything that you do for us, Father, even if we are not aware of it yet, no matter where our walk in life is with you, Lord, I just pray that you fill us with that knowledge and that understanding and that videos like this and, and testimonies and books that are being written, that your word of healing is just being spread so that others can know what it is you're capable of father and even if you're not a believer if you're listening today out of skeptic, skeptic you just don't believe in and it doesn't make no sense to you it's real it's definitely there and i just pray that you have the mind to be able to just look into it and understand that that god's real his healing is real 
So Father, I pray, especially for those parents at this moment that are just struggling, just trying to figure this out. It's hard. I've been there. I've done that. I have been through every medicine you could think of. I have been through every thought in my head as far as how this is going to go pushing forward for the rest of my life. It doesn't have to be that way. And so just, I pray for encouragement to these parents, renew their hearts, renew their souls, give them just the power to understand that they, they are capable of healing their children are capable of being healed. Father, I also pray for those, uh, again, uh, just even if they're not believers, Father, I pray that this is this video is one that will bring them to you, that not only will they have some kind of a spark of interest, but that it will bring them full circle to you and that they will never turn back again. Again, thank you for this interview. I pray that it reaches the masses that need to be reached. We love you. We praise you. It's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Priscilla. What an amazing testimony. I'm just so grateful that we connected and that your story is out here for parents to hear and to be so encouraged. It's so unique. And that's what I love most about um, this different testimonies it, is God is so unique to each person. So I want you to type in the chat tonight. My testimony is unique because the Lord is working personally for you in your life, parents. He really is, and for your children specifically. So thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Thank you, Priscilla. I really appreciate it. Have a good night, everybody.